If you're using a drone for your landscape photography, then you probably love taking it up around dusk or dawn. That's when you get those beautiful soft colors and lighting as well. There's just one problem. Because there's not a lot of light in the scene, your photos tend to have a lot of grain. This is mainly because your drone sensor isn't the best in low light and the images just don't turn out as well as they should. Thankfully, there's a very easy workaround, which I'll show you today. This will allow you to get much higher quality and detailed photos with just a few extra steps. We're gonna start off today in Adobe Bridge and then move to Photoshop. So you will need both of those to follow along with us. If you don't have them yet, you can get them both for $10 a month through Adobe's photography plan or find it another way. And today we'll start off in Adobe Bridge. What you wanna do is navigate to your folder where you've saved all your photos. And before we go any further, I should mention that these need to be in the raw format, in this case, DNG. If your drone is set to only take JPEGs, then you can still kind of follow along. It just won't work out as well as it should. So for future reference, make sure you are shooting in the raw photo format if it's available on your drone. So let's click on our first photo, hold down the shift key, click on our last photo. That way they're all selected, or you can just hit control or command A. Then we'll right click on any one of our thumbnails and open in camera raw. Camera raw is kind of like a plugin to bridge and it allows you to edit your photos very quickly and easily just by moving a few sliders. And I'm just gonna reset everything here very quickly. You know, by default, your raw photos are gonna be lacking in color and contrast, and they're just not gonna look that great, which is why we need camera raw. Really, all I do is just click the auto button right here. When I click auto, it does a pretty good job of getting the photo looking halfway decent. If I still think it needs a little bit more contrast or saturation, whatever that is, I can make those adjustments by moving my sliders. And you can see just by looking at the photo, moving some sliders around, I can get a pretty unique looking image. And if we zoom in, you can really see the problem that we're talking about today. We've got a lot of grain in this photo, and because we have all this grain, we're missing out on some of the finer details that would otherwise be visible in the image. So let's talk about what you actually need to do out there on location for the rest of this workflow. Rather than taking a single photo, take 10, 15, or 20. It's really that easy. You just keep clicking that photo button until you've got enough images. The more photos you have, the better. However, you're gonna eventually gonna run into diminishing returns here. So I'd recommend sticking with 10 photos, but if you have a, maybe an older drone or it's really starting to get dark, you might wanna take as many as 20 images, one after the other. And that's what you see here. Here's the first image, the second photo, the third photo, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You get the idea. And notice how the scene is shifting between every photo. And there's this next image. That's okay. Because the scene is shifting, that actually will help things out a little bit. So you don't really want to worry about that too much. That's really all there is to the workflow, is take at least 10 photos when you're out there on location, one after the other, bring them here into camera raw, make whatever changes you prefer, and then we're ready to move on to the next step. But before we do that, I want to give you a few more pointers here. After you've made your adjustments, or maybe before you even do all these major ones, there's something called profile color. And if you click the little magnifying glass in the four boxes, you can choose from different color profiles, which can really radically alter the mood of your photo. I prefer the modern filters myself, and you can see here they each have a big impact on the look and feel of the photo. Maybe you're going for something more pastel like you see here, or maybe you want it just a little bit softer. Whatever it is, you can click on it, and now that will be applied to the photo. We can now scroll back up to the top, hit the back button, and it says modern 10 amount 100. If I lower the amount, we essentially turn off the effect, but maybe I wanna go even further than 100. I can go all the way up to 200 to maximize the effect. This is just something to be aware of is that these color profiles can really radically alter the look of your photo. And sometimes just a little bit is enough to really make the image pop. Another thing you wanna look at is the white balance because when you're shooting in dusk and dawn environments, the white balance can get really messed up. So if you go to the white balance tab here, if you put it to auto, that should usually fix any weird color casts, but you can always try some of the other presets or just manually move your temperature and tint until you get a color balance you prefer. Although that can be kind of hard. So I normally just stick with as shot or the auto option. Beyond that, you've got your general sliders here, like your exposure, which will make the image brighter or darker contrast it's all pretty self-explanatory i'll let you mess around with that as you see fit and if that all looks good 
then we need to sync these settings with the rest of our photos. And that's as easy as scrolling down to the bottom of your 10 images or however many you took, holding down the shift key, and then clicking. If you do that correctly, your top photo should be highlighted and the rest should have a gray box drawn around them. Now that we have all of our photos selected in the stack, I'll right click on any one of the thumbnails and then choose sync settings. That will bring up a window here. Don't worry about it, just hit okay. Everything should be fine by default. And now you've applied the exact same settings to all of the photos in your stack. With all of your photos synced, now we just need to save them as TIFFs. So you can right click on any one of the thumbnails again, click save images, save images. And this will bring up our window right here. The first thing you wanna do in this window is specify a output location. If you click select folder, make sure you navigate to wherever you're saving your images at. Then I like to right click new folder and call it TIFF, which I've already done here. Then you can click inside your new TIFF folder and hit select. This just helps you stay organized. Next, you wanna move down and change the file extension or the format to TIFF. TIFF is a lossless quality, which means you can save it and you're not gonna lose any data compared to a JPEG, which is lossy and it will lose data. So change this to TIFF and then from there, make sure your color space is sRGB, not Adobe. If you leave it on Adobe and you don't know what you're doing, your color's gonna look really messed up online. So use sRGB with a depth of eight bits, that'll be plenty. And then you can click save. If you did all that correctly, and you might wanna pause the video and make sure everything looks the way it does here. But after you click on save, you're gonna see a little progress bar in the lower left. I'm not showing it right now, but there would be. When that completes, you've now finished your first set of photos. You can either scroll down and continue with the rest of your photos or click done in the lower right. Just to make sure you're on the same page as me, here we have our next image and we took about, let's say in this case only about five photos, but still that's gonna be plenty. What we'll do is we'll make our adjustments, maybe adjust the temperature and tint a little bit. And if we think that looks good, we'll scroll down to the bottom of the stack. That way they're all highlighted. Right click, sync settings, hit okay. Then with all of our images still selected, we'll right click, save image, save images. Everything should still be set up from our initial run. So just hit save wait for that to complete. Once it's complete, you can move on to the next set and just keep repeating that until you've got all your different sets of images completed. At that point, we can hit done in the lower right. It will close us out of camera raw. And now we're ready to move into Photoshop. When you get inside of Photoshop, you can go up to file, scripts, load files in the stack. This is how we're gonna load in all those different photos and stack them together. Again, file, scripts, load files into stack. That'll bring up a window right here and you need to click on browse and then navigate to your TIFF folder and select the first set of images you'd like to stack. I'm actually gonna scroll down and we'll choose another set of photos right here. So I clicked on the first one, I'll hold down shift, click on the last one in the set and then hit okay. Once you've loaded in your TIFF files, make sure you check the attempt to automatically align source images checkbox. This will align all your photos in case your drone moved between each image, which it most likely will have. And this just saves you a lot of headaches later on. So again, check the box that will align your source images after you've loaded in your files and then hit okay. This might take a few minutes, but it shouldn't really give you any problems unless your drone is really blown around between every single photo. And there we go, it looks like it aligned properly. You might notice a checkerboard pattern behind your image. That's just because the drone rotated between all your photos and it had to rotate everything to compensate. It's not a big deal. And when I zoom in, look how nasty everything looks. There's this color grain throughout the photo and it almost looks like somebody had confetti party on the rocks. But once we do our stacking, this should look way better. So to do that, let's click on either the top or bottom photo of the stack, scroll down to the bottom, hold down the shift key and click. It might take you a few times to get the hang of it, but again, either choose the top or bottom photo, hold down the shift key, and then click on the opposite end. That way all of your layers are selected. Then you can right click on any one and choose convert to smart object. 
when we convert all these to a smart object, it's gonna essentially flatten everything. And then at that point, we're gonna apply our stacking algorithm. So if you see the same thing as me, you only have one layer now, that's perfect. This is where we're gonna apply our final stack with layer, smart objects, stack mode, median. When you click on median, it's gonna automatically go through, stack the photos together, and it should give you a much cleaner result. This is really gonna depend on how many photos you took. If you only took two or three, this isn't gonna work that well. If you took 15 or 20 images back to back though, this will give you a very clean and detailed final image. All right, we've applied our stack. Let's zoom in and do a before and after. Remember how gnarly it looked down here? We had all that color noise everywhere. Well, I do. So here's our before, just looks terrible. And after, beautiful, clean, detailed. And how easy was that? All we had to do rather than taking a single frame was take five, 10, 15, or 20, and then do a pretty easy workflow here in Photoshop, and that automatically solved all of our problems. And now you can get those amazing photos, even if you don't have as much light as you'd prefer around dawn or dusk. Look around here too, we have these nice lines, but they're just ruined by all the color noise. After our stack mode, they're completely fixed, and that looks great. Just to make sure you remember these steps, let's do it one more time. If you've got your first set of photos looking good, we'll go back to File, Scripts, Load Files, into Stack. You can feel free to repeat this as many times as you want, depending on how many photos you took while you're out there. Once we're in our Load Layers window here, we'll click Browse, grab our next set of images. I'll click on my first one, hold down the Shift key, click on the last one, hit Open, attempt to automatically align source images. And if you wanna save yourself another step, you could click Create Smart Object after loading layers. That will just save you another click later on. So I'll do both of those this time around. Hit OK. It's gonna go through. Depending on how much your drone rotated, this might take longer than others. But when it's complete, all we'll have to do is go up to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Medium. All right, this time it went through, it stacked our photos automatically and also created a smart object, so that saves us two steps. Now we'll just go up to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Median. Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Median. If we click on that, it's gonna do everything we need it to do. And you can see just how amazing this landscape was. I was out with some friends this weekend who had a drone, and I told them to give this a try because this is a, a well-known trick for astrophotography, and I figured it'd work pretty well for uh, some drone work too. And I should also mention these were taken when it was almost dark out. So the fact that we're getting this clean of a photo with only a handful of images really shows you the power of this stacking method. And you can see here again, just these really ugly false colors throughout the photo. After, looks so much better. Look right here, all the colors are like purple and blues when they shouldn't have been. And one of the nice things is because the drone was actually moving slightly between the photos, it smooths out whatever kind of weird color noise is being caused by the camera sensor, and you get a much more interesting looking image. Before we go, I wanna talk about how to save these. If you go up to File, Save As, make sure you're saving this as a new TIFF photo. I've already got a set right here. I'm just calling them Untitled, just because I'm lazy. I'll call this one Untitled 6. Make sure you are saving this as a TIFF, and then hit Save. You can just hit OK when this window comes up. And there you go. You've now got your clean, detailed photo using our workflow today. There's one more thing I want to mention. If you go into your TIFF directory, where we are saving everything, consider all these TIFFs as just working copies. You don't really need to hold on to them. They're just going to take up a lot of space. So after you've gone through and stacked and saved all your different sets of images, then at that point, you don't need to hang on to all the original TIFF photos. See, these are taking up almost three gigs. You might as well select them all and delete them. Because you still have the raw photos here if you're staying organized. You can easily go back and redo whatever you want to do. But again, these TIFF files, they're just kind of intermediate working files. We don't need them long term. The only things we want long term are our stacked images, which we have right here. And again, if I zoom in, it's nice and clean and detailed after using our median stack. But that's all I've got for you today. We've covered my workflow for getting clean, detailed drone photos in low light scenarios. All you have to do is when you're out there on location, take five, 10, maybe 15 or 20, depending on the quality of your drone sensor and the amount of light. The more photos, the better. 
Then when you get back to the computer, load up Adobe Bridge, select all your files, open them in Camera Raw. When you get into Camera Raw, you can very easily make whatever adjustments you want to the photo. If you get your first photo looking good in the series, hold down the Shift key, click on the last photo, and then sync the settings. When you've synced all your settings and every photo looks identical, then you save these as TIFF photos. Once you've saved them as TIFF photos, you go back to Adobe Photoshop, load the files into Stack. After you've loaded them all in and you have your Smart Objects, then just go up to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Medium. It's that easy. At that point, you create your clean, detailed photo and you're ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you're able to get much better images now that you know how to get the most out of your drone.